Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church for this, the fourth Sunday in Advent. Um, a number of announcements before we begin. Uh, first question, is the microphone on? Can you hear okay? Maybe not? Okay. Yes, I'm, I'm getting conflicting. I don't see the lights on, but some stuff's been moved around up there. So We will get it on in the meantime. We, are we, okay, we got somebody up there taking care of it. So, um, a few announcements before we begin. Um, a lot of things uh, coming up uh, this week. This is the fourth Sunday in Advent, so Christmas is surely upon us. A reminder, December 22nd, 7 p.m., right here, Christmas Lessons and Carols. December 24th, 5 p.m., Christmas Eve, Divine Service with Holy Communion here, 5 p.m., Christmas Eve. 7 p.m., Christmas Eve, Lessons and Carols at St. Paul's. And December 25th, we will have a Christmas Day service here, uh, 9 o'clock, joint service, St. John's and St. Paul's, so it'll all be here. So we hope everyone can make it out for that. Altar flowers this week are given by Connie Smith in memory of her parents, Oscar and Maxine. Uh, the St. John's School Christmas program, they will be showing that uh, during this morning's adult Bible study, so right after church there. Um, our new COVID policy is now in the bulletin, if you want to take a look at it. In lieu of canceling services, St. John's will now remain open Sundays following any positive case. The church office will notify close contact, that is those within six feet or more, for more than 15 minutes. And please remember that distancing helps to limit your potential exposure. So a lot in the bulletin this week. Um, and finally, um, we have an announcement concerning Pastor Conrad. He has declined the call, and so the call process continues. So continue to pray for St. John's, as I know you are. Pray for the call committee, the elders, and all parties involved. Thank you. We begin our worship with hymn 350, Come Thou Precious Ransom, Come. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
of grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading is written in the fifth book of Moses, called Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desire of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name. I myself will require it of him. This is the word of the Lord.
please be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 357, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
In the midst of life, indeed every day, you are met with myriad distractions, myriad things that need your attention, and many things that do not. You grow weary of the world, its responsibilities, its demands. It's asking you to cater to its whims, and it's demanding that you fall into its allegiance. And many people who wear the name Christian, baptized in the name of the triune God, go down the broad path. Perhaps, as we've said many times from this pulpit, being away from the church truly is harmful. But what causes people to go astray? What truly causes them to be anxious? What really causes them to turn to idolatry and to false belief? Deuteronomy says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command. And whoever will not listen to my words, that he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. I will put my words in his mouth, says the word of God. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. Indeed, Jesus Christ has come, and he is coming again. But the word of the Lord endures forever, and it is forever. It is for our instruction. It is for our correction. And it is for our salvation, so that we may hear the gospel and in hearing, we might believe. But if we've turned from the word, if we refuse to hear, if we refuse to study and meditate on it, we will find ourselves lost. And this isn't a simple case of, of merely forgetting what was said or refusing to read the Bible. You see the fruits of ignoring the word of God. This is a sin common to young old and everything in between. Why do people fall into false doctrine? Why do people turn to ideologies that deny God and His love? Because they have forgotten the Word and they have failed to heed it. It's a very simple thing. I have raised up a prophet. And perhaps you say, well, if we had someone like John the Baptist or Jeremiah or whoever, we would listen to them. But what is the history of the world? What is recorded in Scripture? That his prophets have been raised up by God. There was always a faithful remnant, but oftentimes many refused to listen. And so too this day, people refuse to hear the word of the Lord. And it's an even greater sin now when the word of the Lord is at our fingertips. It is in our homes and it is neglected. Neglected within churches, neglected within families, neglected within our lives. And we must ask ourselves if we are truly listening to it. It begins very subtly by doubting what the scripture said. Could God have indeed made the world? Well, I don't know. Perhaps he just wound it up and let it go. He surely couldn't have made it in natural days. Could God really flood the whole earth? Could God really part the Red Sea? Could Jesus really heal the blind? Could Jesus really rise from the dead? Can Jesus really save? It's a slippery slope from denying one article to the next. And soon we find ourselves utterly lost. But you cannot have it both ways. You either believe every word of God as it is rightly understood, or you risk losing all of it. And it's not a petty subject. It's not something to take lightly. We hear it every day in media, in film, everything. 
That, well, what God said about marriage, he didn't mean. Or what God said about murder, he didn't mean. So surely, whatever God says about anything else, he didn't mean. Or, we hear, what does it matter if I sin? What does it matter if I ignore this article of faith or this verse of scripture? God has to forgive me anyway. I hear that about three times a week. It never gets old. Trust me. God is merciful, and God is love, but God is also clear in what He expects of us. And this isn't merely a checklist of morals, doing right and doing wrong. Anybody can do that. We can get that at any club that we want. God reveals Himself in the Word. He reveals His character. He reveals much about Himself. And in revealing His character, specifically through the law... Showing his righteousness, we are shown our unrighteousness. We must know that. We must truly know that we are sinners, and we must truly seek a right remedy. If we don't believe we're really sinners, we're not really going to cling to Christ. We're not really going to trust the gospel. We're going to trust in some kind of divine mulligan, as it were. God just gives me a do-over. Or just winks at what we do. But God does not wink at sin. We glory in the cross of Christ for that very reason. God is not merely passing over sin, so to speak. God has atoned for sin. God passes us over, yes, because of His mercy, but for the sake of the blood of the Son of God. And we preach this Word of God every week. We preach this gospel because we need to hear it. And we preach every word of God that comes through the lectionary or anywhere, and we don't shrink from it because we are not ashamed of it. Many have grown weary and anxious in these days. Why? Because they've perhaps forgotten the promises of God. They are taking in every other philosophy, every other perspective, Everything else they find, and what does the world tell you to do? It tells you to worry. It tells you to cower in fear. It says, don't love your neighbor, fear your neighbor. Or, if you want to put it in a more secularly pious way, love your neighbor by avoiding your neighbor. Stay in your cube, stay in your pod, watch the screen, and be afraid. But the Word says, do not be anxious for anything. The Word says that God will provide. The Word says that your salvation is secure, that the Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The world finds itself in tumults at every age. And indeed, every day there are strifes and envies and quarrels and riots and other forms of violence committed because people do not have peace in their hearts. They do not have the peace of God. When we forget the word, when we neglect it, we're left only with it to our own devices. And when left to our own devices, when we find ourselves far from Christ, we become like Cain and Abel. And so the evil in the world should not surprise you. But the evil that creeps up in our own hearts, while not surprising, is not something that we should be proud of or seek to glory in. The Word of God should humble us. The Word of God informs us. The Word of God makes us low that it might build us back up. And so we say we want a prophet but you have the words of the prophet right here that we often refuse to listen to. And so if Jeremiah or John the Baptist was here today, I have no doubt they would be persecuted and ran out even by the so-called faithful of the day today. Very often the word of the Lord is hard to hear by people who claim to be believers, yes, as well as by non-believers. But God raises up prophets. God has preserved their words in the scriptures. They are for our edification. And we must take them up and read. Your worry.
worried about tomorrow. What does the scripture say? Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will be anxious enough for itself. You think, how will I provide? What does the word of God say? Consider the lilies of the field or the birds of the air. So much anxiety we suffer is because we forget the promises of God because we've not studied them. We've not read them. We have gone our lives between baptism, confirmation, and post-confirmation without rarely cracking a Bible, and heaven forbid, without rarely bending the knee, well, with rarely bending the knee in prayer. The cure for much of our anxiety is found in the Word, and it is found by faithfully trusting the promises therein. The cure for temptation, one of the cures, is the study of the Word of God. For when the Lord is tempted by the devil in the wilderness, how does he respond? With the Word of God. And so when you're confronted with temptation, when you are confronted with hard questions and things like that, what do you do? How do you answer? Do you turn to the person who is objecting to your faith or who is telling you to live in servile fear? Do you, do you give them a, a meme? Do you show them a Facebook post? Do you show them an article from the CDC? Is that the hope that is within us? Or do we recall that Jesus Christ has come, that Jesus Christ has lived, died, and lives again for us? Do we recall the deliverance of God's people time and time again in the scriptures against insurmountable odds? We see God deliver them. We see testimonies to God's fidelity to his people. You are baptized Christians. You have covenanted with God. And so you think, I am anxious for the day. Will God surely part the Red Sea like he did for the children of Israel? Will God really, like at the rebellion of Korah, cause the earth to open up and swallow the enemies of God? Will I see a miracle like that in my lifetime? Perhaps. But you live on the other side of the greater miracle. For while the temporal enemies of the people of God were smote by the Lord in the Old Testament and at times in the New. All things now have been put under foot. Jesus Christ has conquered all. And so you worry, will God vindicate me? Will I overcome? And the scriptures say, indeed, you have already overcome. The world will seek to make you forget that. The world and the devil will seek to pull you away from these promises. But God has already brought you through the Red Sea. God already sets you on dry ground. God keeps you safely in the ark of his church where no floodwaters can enter in. But the danger is in forgetting this. The smoldering wick, the bruised reed of a dampening faith is snuffed out when we forget the word and the promises of God. Stay vigilant in the scriptures. The scriptures also say, forsake not the meeting of the brethren. So be vigilant in your meeting together. Partake of the sacrament often, the medicine of immortality. Meditate upon the word. Pray daily. Trust in Christ and be not anxious. God has made his enemies his footstool. Christ has and is coming. His advent is upon us. Christ is coming to vindicate you. In Jesus' name, amen.
As we go to our Lord in prayer today, in particular, we remember uh, the family of Connie Shalio. Connie passed away this week. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you sent John the Baptist to proclaim the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Grant that we who prepare to celebrate the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ may die to sin and rise to new life, that we may treasure up and ponder in our hearts the Christ announced by your forerunner. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent John to proclaim the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Richly and daily forgive our sins and the sins of all believers. Send us faithful preachers who will not deny but confess your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings. Look with compassion upon the lonely the depressed and the despairing. Grant healing to the sick and give peace to the anxious. In particular, we remember Norma, Corinne, Bob, Herman, Kim, Ida, Gordon, and Linda. Come for all who mourn the death of Connie with certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant that all who receive your Son's holy body and precious blood may do so in repentance and faith, and in the unity of a true confession. Work in us this Christmas a love and desire for your blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the key of David and the scepter of the house of Israel. By his death, he has opened the kingdom of heaven and closed the gates of hell for all who trust in him. By his resurrection, he has rescued the prisoners who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Grant that, as we recall the thanksgiving his advent in the flesh, who may always confess him and remain watchful for his advent in glory at the last day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is the Christ so It is truly me trying to tell you, Terry, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared. Proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath we reveal when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing.
when he had given thanks and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Just do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Savior Ren, the heavens wide. 